morning showers. I am so excited to be here on Dickens this morning. I'm so shocked at how much the beaches change every time I come here. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick zoom in here. So we walked around here, okay? So you guys will probably recognize this um, area where I've walked around before. Okay, but if you look, normally we're able to walk straight across here to the other side, but today there's this big um, kind of lake <laughs> in the middle. So there's another island here, right here. Like we're on a, a separate island, so it's pretty crazy if you guys can see. So normally this would just be one solid area and the water's kind of carved out a separate island. So we're gonna go explore this whole place and the tide is going out. So eventually uh, most of this will be uncovered. So we'll be able to go walk through there and see um, what we have. So let's go get some shell on. So it's a little bit breezy out here this morning and I just want to show you guys, you can see the wind, how windy it's been, um, and you can see how the, the sand has been blowing um, the sand up on the shells. So there are definitely some shells up here that are going to be fun to look through, but we're going to come down here and check out, if you can see here, how the, the wind has blown the sand up on those conks. Here's another conk that's kind of buried. So lots of shells that are buried in the sand here. And that is one of the awesome reasons why every time you come out here, you're going to find um, more and more shells because every time the tide comes in, um, things get uncovered. Look how cool it looks. It kind of looks like snow, doesn't it? With all of the, the sand kind of blown on top of all of the shells. Here's some conks here. So lots of fun things to be seen today. And it's a very chilly out. The water is very, very cold. So definitely not a day for swimming. My toes are going to be freezing here in a little while. So let me come over here. I'm going to roll my sleeve up too. All right. Got my sleeves rolled up so I can check out what's going on down here in the water. Do you guys see this horse conch that I see right here? Look at this pretty little horse conch. Got some barnacles on it, but that's going to be really pretty cleaned up. There's another little biting conch. So let's see what else we can find just in this little, uh, I call it a tide pool, but it's kind of like more like a tide lake. Look how big this is. But the water is very clear. The sun's at a great angle right now to be able to check out this little area. And if the wind would calm down a minute, it would you wouldn't have the ripples on the water. But this is going to be such a great place as the tide comes um, comes out to be able to see all of the fun shells that are going to be uncovered. Here looks like a little lace murex. So Dickman's is a really fun place for certain types of shells too. So if you've been watching um, the virtual shelling network, you'll know that we find lots of sand dollars here. Look at that pretty olive. Lots of sand dollars here. Lots of murexes here. Looks like that's a big Live top. Look how cool that is, you guys. Isn't that so neat on this um, pen shell here? So he's just hanging on. Very cool. We'll put him back, back in the water there. That is such a cool thing to see. And look at this really pretty. Honk. 
This is gonna be so pretty cleaned up. Look at the purple. Can you guys see the purple lip on this conch? So it's all slimy, it's kind of gross, but this will be really pretty cleaned up. So that'll be great. It's gonna be a little bit stinky, but. And there's a little paper fig here. I think it's broken though. Broken paper fig. And this looks like maybe a little baby tulip here. A little tulip. And then looks like here we might have a little top hiding. So, so many shells are here just buried in the sand. Just waiting to be uncovered. Let's see what else catches our eye. When you're, when you're looking for shells like this, you have to kind of look for shape, right? So sometimes you're just going to see an outline of the shell in the sand. And sometimes you're going to see color, so you might see just a little part of the color of the shell sticking out of the sand. And I also like to look at little groupings like this, like when you see a little group like this, sometimes you'll have shells that kind of get stuck together. Here's like a cool piece of driftwood, nice big piece of driftwood here, here's a little conch. Like here's a little piece of some sea urchin pieces and here's a little murex right here right next to a little horse conch right there make sure nobody's in there can't tell if anybody's in there or not nope just some sand Look how pretty this purple lip is on this conch. Look how pretty. Let me turn around so hopefully you guys can see that purple lip. Now I want to show you guys something, okay? Do you guys see in here? This conch is not alive, but it still has remnants of the critter in there. Okay, so yes, you can take this shell. The shell is uh, no longer alive, so you can take it, but it's not empty. It is still um, full of critter. So when you pick up a shell like this and you would quickly pick it up and look inside and you don't see anything, right? You don't see a live critter in there. But if you put this in your shell bag and you take it home, it's gonna stink really bad because there's still gonna be decaying tissue inside. So if you have to have the shell, and you want to take it home you have to understand that you have to somehow get this critter out if you just stick this in bleach it's not going to do anything it's just it's gonna just you know it's gonna bleach the bacteria but it's not going to do anything for the the tissue you've got to get it out the best thing to do is to put this outside bury it in the ground and then let the ants and the bugs go in and clean that out for you Otherwise, you're gonna have a super stinky shell and you're really never gonna get all of that tissue out of there. So just be aware that when you're shelling, just because the shell is no longer alive, um, doesn't mean it's necessarily something that you're gonna wanna take home because it could be super, super stinky. So just understand that. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna start to cross over and I think this might be a crab trap over here. It is a crab trap. And it is a little bit windy, so I like to kind of, let me try to block the wind. I like to kind of look around at these sometimes. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the wind, um, but when the tide goes out a little bit, you might be able to see more clearly. It looks like there might be a little conch there. Um, this looks like it might be a, oh, it's a little bit deep. Here's a little paper fig. So can you guys see how there's some like just kind of slimy stuff on here? This will clean up really nice in some bleach, but this is going to be a stinky shell. So this is the type of shell that you definitely want to bleach out um, because this mud in here, you guys can kind of see the mud like on my fingers. It's, it's just going to be really stinky. Um, 
and muddy. So these are the type of shells that you definitely want to bleach out so they're not stinky. But I always like to check crab traps. Like, I don't know, I'm just the type of person that, um, I don't know, I wanna make sure there's no like ugh, crabs in there or anything. I can see a sponge in there. I don't see any crabs though. Oh my gosh. Oh, shut the front door. Do you guys see this? Oh my gosh. Do you guys see that? Is that a true tulip? Oh my God. Do you think it's alive? Oh man, I got so excited for a second. Look how gorgeous this true tulip is. Oh my gosh, it is big and it is beautiful and it is like super duper alive. So this is the animal inside. This is his operculum or the little trap door, okay? And if I tickle him a little bit, you'll see him start to close up and he'll squirt the water out of the top there. And he'll start to close, let me rinse him off a little bit. And he'll start to close his little trap door. He's like, gosh, it's cold out here. Look how gorgeous. Ah, oh, I'm so bummed. Look how cool, look at him. Look at him moving. how fun now the question is is do I put him back locked in a crab trap where he can't get out but he's safe from predators or do I take him out to where I release him out of a trap look how fun are you happy to be free buddy hi hello oh that's okay hi I don't know how long he was locked in a crab trap for, but he certainly can't breed in there. Look at him crawling on my hand. Now leave it to me to have a conversation with the mollusk, right? You guys see him moving around, crawling? All right, I think I'm gonna take him back out to sea because this being locked in a crab trap isn't gonna be, it's not gonna be good for him. Um, is there anybody else in there that needs to be rescued? There is, there's a little top too. There's another live top. There's a live top too in here. There's, there's a little animal for the live top. sea sponge will be fine in there. All right, I think I'm going to take these guys out to see because... 
Wow, what a treat. What a treat to have this awesome, um, this awesome live shell. I wanna be able to let him breed and produce more true tulips. And if that gets uncovered for too long or gets stuck and the water doesn't get up, he'll die. So that's why I'm making that decision. Hopefully it's the right one. We never really know, but um, some people say not to interfere with nature, but a crab trap's not nature. That is definitely not nature at all. So we're gonna go ahead and put him back in nature. I just love how he's hanging on. Look how fun. All right, I'm gonna walk him over and hope that I'm not, I'm knee deep right now. So let I me mean, hope I don't drop my phone. All right, so we walked over and the little guy is back out to sea. Hopefully I'm able to be free and breed and do all the fun things that true tulips do. Um, but right here on the beach, and I'm trying to block the wind because it is a very, very, um, windy day we have an egg casing a very very cool egg casing for a lightning whelk so for those of you who have never seen this before uh, this is what they look like and the unique thing about egg casings is sometimes you will find more than one so if you look closely here you will find that there is tulip egg casings also attached right here and then there's also a couple right here and right here attached to the whelk egg casing. So that's really interesting too. Um, so let's just see, this one has not hatched yet. Oh, and look, there's even some other egg casings right here too. I don't know what kind those are. Might be, they kind of, well, I was gonna say they look like King Crown, but they're kind of small to be King Crown, but um, that's the unique thing about egg casings is a lot of times you will have other egg casings attached. So if you look really close here, you'll see in here the little baby whelks inside. Can you see them floating around in there? Let's see if I can get a good, a good shot. I don't know if it's better in the shade for you guys to see them. Can you see them in there? in the sun. Let's see if I can hold it up. Nice to see them. So the little baby whelks are in there. And we'll put this back in the water too. I don't think it's going to survive um, just because it's been sitting out. But we'll put it back in here and make sure it doesn't dry out too much. And oh, here's a nice sand dollar. So this is a great place for sand dollars. This one's got a little chip out of it, but look how pretty. Dickman's is a great place for sand dollars. Here's a big piece of a, ooh, big piece of a um, lightning whelk there. sand dollar here hiding so this is a great place for sand dollars I mean if you want to find sand dollars this is definitely the place what I recommend is finding two putting them back to back and then you can stick them in your shell bag um, that is going to help them stabilize if you didn't bring a container so I usually don't bring a container um, especially when I'm filming because just lack of hands but that way I can stick them in my shell bag just like that and they'll be fine check out this really pretty conch though look at this conch and how pretty the striping is on that conch beautiful and then just remember um, especially when you're putting a heavier shell like a conch in your bag you know if you've got sand dollars in there don't just be tossing your you know, conks in your bag. You don't want to um, break your sand dollars, of course. Oh, and look at this. Look at this tiny little um, calico crab shell. They are so fragile. 
So what we can do is we can find, let's see, we can find a bivalve, and if you can find one intact, that's the best thing. So let me just go rinse this out real quick. Let's see if this is gonna be big enough though. This one might be better. So we'll just rinse this out. Any bivalve is fine. I know it's windy, let me try to block the wind here. So we'll take a bivalve and then we'll stick our little crab shell in there. Ooh, I don't know if that one's gonna be big enough either. And then we'll close it up just like that and then we'll stick that in the corner of our shell bag so it is safely in there and I don't have to worry about it getting crushed. And then when I take my shell bag home, I just make sure to empty it out shell by shell. I don't, I don't just dump it out because I've got sand dollars in there, I've got bivalves together in there holding my fragile, so I'm just gonna stick that in the corner just like that right here. Here's another big piece of, looks like a big well. Here's a little sand dollar, a little piece of one stuck there. But Dickman's is also a great place to find those giant shells um, that everybody loves to find. So if you're looking for those giant shells, this is a great place to come. Sand dollars, giant shells. Um, also, for those of you who love Sun Ray Venus clams, um, they're so abundant here. So this is a great place to find those as well. Remember that they bleach very easily. Um, they bleach in the sun very easily and they bleach in bleach water very easily too. So this one's a lot lighter. Um, so just remember when you're cleaning them, do not leave them in bleach for a very long time because they do bleach pretty easily. They're still really pretty, but if you want that nice dark color, just make sure that you're mindful of that. Here's another sand dollar. I know it's windy today, guys. Sometimes there's just nothing I can do about the wind. Um, but this is virtual shelling. So that means that you're kind of shelling for real, um, like as if you were here. And if you were here, it would be windy. So unfortunately, there's not always a whole lot I can do um, about the wind. So bear with me on that. There's a nice big giant heart cockle. I love these out of here look how pretty that is that is so gorgeous put that in my shell bag all right i'm just going to shell this rack line um going down a little bit and see what we can find um oh my gosh look at this giant <gasps> humongous shark eye oh my word let me turn around so you guys can see that baby Woo! that is huge look how big and beautiful that is holy cow what a pretty shark eye that is oh my gosh absolutely beautiful and i think i just saw a sand dollar here too where did it go oh i thought i saw it hiding Sometimes they're hiding, hiding in the sand. No, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, let's see what else we can find. Just sitting out here on the rack line. Sometimes shells are just, just sitting out waiting for you to pick them up. There's a really pretty um, uh, pear whelk. Oh, and here's a tulip. Here's a banded tulip. Pretty one. Let's rinse these out real quick. Beautiful. one too. I love those calico or leopard crab shells. Oh, speaking of calico, here's a calico um, 
clam. Oh, is it alive? Oh, this is the first one I've ever found that's alive. So, this little guy is alive. So I know I have a lot of you that are calico um, clam fans. And this one's alive, how fun! Look how pretty. So let me go put him back out there. We definitely need him to make more little baby calico clams for sure. Here's a little sand dollar. So if you see a part of a sand dollar, you have to be really careful when you pick these guys up because if you just go to pick it up like this, it'll probably break. So I kind of try to get most of the sand off the top and then you can kind of work your finger around and pick it up like that. So just know that when you see them buried like that, um, you want to just be really careful because they are really fragile. The more bleached out they are, um, usually the more fragile they are and the easier they're going to break. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're specifically looking for sand dollars. A lot of them will be, um, a lot of them will be, there's another couple more sun ray venus. Oh, here's a little, here's another little uh, tulip egg casing so cute a lot of them will be buried a lot of shells are buried that's the fun thing about coming to these beaches is everybody thinks that people take all the shells but um there's no way that they can because some some shells are buried look at this perfect little uh sand dollar and something just caught my eye over here too. And I had a lot of questions about this and I should specify um, because I oftentimes, I'm gonna set the sand dollar right here. I oftentimes just call these angel wings and I shouldn't because, well, they kind of are angel wings, but they're not the same angel wings that we find that are large. So there's two kinds of angel wings. There's regular angel wings that we find that are really big. And then there's these little guys that we call false angel wings. Now, sometimes we do find baby angel wings. And I, I would always just as a kid call these baby angel wings because they're small and they're baby angel wings, right? They're small angel wings. But the correct name for these is false angel wings. So you have angel wings, which are the large, the large size. And then you have false angel wings, which are like the mini size. I call these baby angel wings because they're just baby angel wings, but the correct name is false angel wings. And the way that you can really tell the difference, um, this one's actually a better example, is you see the ridges here. Okay, so there's ridges. The ridges stop about halfway up and the rest of the shell is fairly smooth. Where on a regular angel wing, and I'll try to find one today to show you the difference, the ridges go all the way up the shell. So that's kind of the way that you can tell the difference. Um, also the size. So an adult false angel wing really doesn't get much bigger than these guys here. They only get about three inches. Where an adult angel wing gets about six inches. They get pretty large. So I always just call these baby angel wings, but false. False angel wings is the correct name. So for those of you who are asking, um, that is your angel wing uh, education for today. All right, here's another little um, sand dollar. So I'm gonna take these two sand dollars, I'm gonna put them back to back. Okay, and then there's a bunch of these just clam shells like this. So I'm gonna find um, two that are relatively the same size that I can put together and make a whole one. And then I'm gonna stick my little um, sand dollars in there and then I'm gonna put my two little baby angel wings, AKA false angel wings, in there as well, because those are pretty fragile. And I'm just gonna close my clamshell like that. Okay, so they're safely in there. And then I'm gonna stick this in the corner of my shell bag. So this way, they are safe and protected against the other shells in my shell bag. And I'll be able to get them home, no problem.
Oh, here's an angel wing. Okay. So, let me show you guys here. So if you guys can see the ridges, okay, these ridges here go all the way up the shell. So you guys can see that. Whereas on the false angel wings, or the baby angel wings as they call them, they stop here. They stop about midway and it'll be more smooth. So you can see these ridges go all the way up. So that's a way that you can tell, aside from the size, this is obviously, you know, like a four inch shell. So that's how you guys can tell the difference. And here's another little, little egg sac. This one looks like it hatched. This one hatched right here. You can see the little hole in the top there. So you can zoom. So you guys can see this little hole right here is where they hatched out of. So that's really fun. So we'll put that in our shell bag too. Here's another big piece of a, um, woo, big piece of a, Oh, whelk there. So again, if you're looking for those giant shells, this is a great place to come try to find them. Here is another angel wing. It tip's a little bit broken, but this is an even better example, I think, without the barnacles on it, that you guys can see those ridges really well. They go all the way up the shell on that angel wing. So that's kind of a cool example. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful day here at Dickman's Point. I am headed back to the boat, but what an awesome day we had finding some amazing shells and beach treasures here. If you love this episode, please be sure to share with your shell loving and beach friends. Thank you so much again for your support. And until next time, have a shell-tastic day and I'll see you again soon.